This is Abhilash from Selenium Express and today in this tutorial we are going to talk about polymorphism in Java. So if we talk about this word called polymorphism, this is actually a Greek word, okay? And if we separate this word, this poly has a meaning and this morphism has a meaning. So this poly means many, right? And this morphism means form, right? So it's actually many forms. So what do you mean by that many forms or you can say this morphism also can be called as behavior. So many forms are many behaviors. So that, that is what uh, the word polymorphism means. But what do you mean by that and how it is related to Java. Okay, so let's talk about it. But before that, let me give you an example. Okay, let, let me talk about, uh, you know, God. All right, so if you talk about God, so let's say if I am going to a temple, all right, and if I'm saying, hi, God, then Krishna will say, hi. And if I'm going to a church, and if I'm saying, hi, God, then Jesus will say me, hi. And if I'm going to a masjid, and if I'm saying, hi, God, then Allah will say, hi. So God is one, right? But he has many forms, right? And it depends where you are calling and uh, which God you are calling. And accordingly, uh, the answer you will get from your God. Right. If you're calling a Hindu God, then Krishna will answer you. Right. All right. So now we understand that God is one, but he has many forms. And like that in Java, one method has many forms. One method can have many behavior. So now let's understand that. OK, so let me declare a class here. Let me create a class over here. OK, so let me remove these tops. So polymorphism means many forms. All right. OK. So now let's say I have a class here, okay? And let's say my class name is Aced, all right? Okay, so my class starts here and my class ends here. So now let's say my class taste has a method called demo. So I'll write void and demo. So demo is a method and I'll open it and I'll close it. So this demo has no parameter, right? It's zero parameter, right? Or no parameter, no argument or whatever you're saying about it, okay? So this is zero parameter. So let me write a print statement over here. Let's say system.out.println and I'll say uh, no args or no parameter. I'll, I'll say no args, okay? So inside my test class, I have a method called demo. And there's just a simple print statement over here called no args, all right? All right, so now let's say I have an, another method, okay? So let's say my method is void. And again, my method name is demo, right? So I have a, another method called demo. But here you can see we have already a method called demo, right? I'm again declaring a, another method. I'm again creating an, another method called demo, right? And here I want a parameter. Right, so let's say uh, int i, okay? So now this demo method accept a parameter which is of int type. And let's say again, I have a print statement over here, system.out.println, and I have, let's say, uh, int uh, args, right? I have a simple print statement over here and I'll close this method. So now you can see I have one method, which is demo, and I have an, another method, whose name is demo as well. So the method name is same over here and over here as well. So both this method has the same name, demo and demo. But what is different over here is that this method does not have a parameter. This is of no parameter, right? But this method has a parameter. It is of one parameter, right? And I can have another method over here, let's say, void again and my method name will be same let's say demo and here again i'll i'll be taking boolean so i'll write boolean and i'll write j and again i'll write system dot out dot print a lane i'll write boolean arc all right okay so now you can see one method which name is demo, this method, this method name is demo, and this method, this method is also demo. So all the methods that I have over here, one thing is common, is name is same. But all this method does have a different, different behavior. If we talk about this method, 
does not accept a parameter and it prints out no args. And this method does accept one parameter which is called int and uh, it prints out int args. And this method does accept one argument which is boolean and it prints out boolean arc. So all this method have a different behavior, isn't it? But one thing is common, its name is same, right? Okay, so if I want, I can also have a, another method over here. So I can say, uh, let's say I don't have any space here, so let me write it over here. So I can also have a method called void, and my method name is demo again. And let's say this method accept two arguments, okay? So let's say one of int type, I can have int i, and one argument is double type. I can write double and d, right? And again, I can write system.out.println and I can write int uh, double args, right? So this is again an, another method of this class called test. Okay, so let's say this is my test class and so over here. All right. All right, so this is one of the example of polymorphism in Java. And this type of polymorphism is called method overloading. So let me write it over here. Method overloading. Okay. So this is an example of method overloading. Now let's understand the definition of method overloading and uh, what is a method overloading called in Java. Okay. So now let's create the definition of method overloading by seeing this example. Okay. So if we talk about this method, we have four different methods over here, right? Demo, 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 and demo. And all these methods name is same, isn't it? But what is different is this parameter. See, this is zero parameter because there is no parameter for this particular method. There is one parameter which is int. There is one parameter which is boolean. There is two parameter which is int and double. So the concept of defining or the concept of creating multiple methods with same name, but with same number of parameter or different number of parameter is called method overloading. But there is a thing that you need to remember. So see, if the number of parameter is same, make sure the data type is different. So what I mean by that is, see, here we have a method called demo and here we have a method called demo. And it has one parameter, it has also one parameter. But it has the parameter which is int. And this method parameter is boolean, right? This is also one parameter. But this data type is different, right? This is also one parameter. This is also one parameter. But this is int and this is boolean. So make sure that if the number of parameter is same, the data type should be different. Okay? So this is what method overloading looks like. call all this method uh, in our program okay so to call all this method first of all we need a main method right so let me declare that so I can say public static void main and I can write string arguments all right and let me open it here and close it over here okay so now I want to call this methods to this particular main method so this main method is static. This methods are not static. I want to call this non-static method to a static context. So how to call non-static stops to a static context? To call the non-static variables and non-static method to a static context, we need to create the object of our class. So my class is test over here, right? So I can create the object for test class. So I can write test, t equal to new test, okay? So now let's say I want to call this method, this Boolean method, okay? So I can call like this. So t dot, I want to call which method? Demo method, right? So this will be demo. And I want to call this Boolean method. So 
if this method accept a boolean argument right so i can write true or false so i can so suppose i'm writing true over here right so t dot demo of true all right so now let's understand what happens whenever we call this particular method right but before that let us understand our previous example i have given you an example right in the start of this tutorial that god has many forms right but god is one suppose for hindu he has one form for muslims he has one form for christians he has one form let's say i'm a hindu and i'm calling my god hey god then hindu god should respond right so like that here this demo method has many forms right but whenever i'm calling this method this demo method passing boolean as the argument then the demo method which has boolean as this argument this method should respond right so now let's understand what happens behind the scene so whenever i'm going to call this particular method now the jvm is going to scan through all the methods available over here okay so first jvm is going to check okay this is the first method this method is demo so is this demo method accepting a true i mean accepting a boolean no this is zero param uh, method right so it so it doesn't accept that okay so uh, it's not matching right not matched okay it's going to go for the second method now this particular method demo method is it accepting a boolean as its argument no so this is also not matched right so this is rejected now it comes here is this method is demo yes this method is demo now is this method is accepting a boolean as its argument yes it's accepted so this method is going to execute right and the output you know the output will be boolean arc right it will be boolean it's going to print this particular line right boolean arcs right and similarly if i'm going to call another another method over here let's say p dot uh, demo again uh let's say 10 comma 10.22 okay so now again uh the method name is demo and i'm passing two different arguments 10 is a integer and uh, 10.22 is a double so jpm is going to scan through all these methods and it need to find the appropriate method right now is uh, now is going to match over here it it has two arguments but it has one argument so this is uh this is got uh, rejected now this is got rejected this is got rejected now here it comes now it accept two uh, two arguments and the first argument is 10 uh which is a integer so uh this is matched now it's going to check the second argument the second argument is 10.22 which is a double so this particular uh you know uh method matched so this is going to call this particular method and the output will be in a uh, int double arcs right so i can write int double arcs right this is going to be the output similarly if i write t dot demo only uh let's say t dot demo of 10 right so now again jpm is going to check is this particular method accepting at 10 as its argument so is this matching is this method is matching now is this method is matching yes because this accept integer is this argument and this is what i'm passing so this method is going to be executed and int uh arcs is going to be my output all right so this is how method overloading in java works but here we need to understand one more thing why method overloading so this is what all the concept is okay but but here we need to understand that why method overloading in, in c language we did not have method overloading or any other older programming languages also does not support method overloading concept but why java supports method overloading why other languages or the latest programming languages which supports oops those languages also supports method overloading what's the benefit of uh, using method overloading and what is the advantages that we are getting out of it if you want to know all these things just watch my next tutorial and you'll get all your answers so i'll see you in the next tutorial till then bye bye